Hello, I'm Manoj Karmakar. Welcome to ISSPS TV. If you like any of our videos, do remember to click the like and share button. If you are new to this channel, do remember to subscribe so that you can get regular notifications of any future uploads. I send, uh, I send Manoj Kamakar for his invitation and uh, this uh, opportunity to share with you all. I am an anesthesiologist uh, interested in the microanatomy applied to rational anesthesia and pain medicine. Good morning and good afternoon. This is a 3D reconstruction from MRI in normal patient. At the lumbar spine, there is a real epidural space filled by fat where we perform the lumbar puncture and a virtual epidural space located anterior to vertebral lamina. The fat thickness would allow the epidural space to be identified with a minimum 10 effect in experienced hands. But unlike the cervical spine, there is no epidural fat and it is necessary to produce a 10 effect. Supraspinous and interspinous ligament and ligament flavon are crossed at median approach, but supraspinous an interspinous ligament with a thin thickness similar to a spinous process are prevent in paramedian approach. This is a ligamentum flavum from anterior view. Two portions are fused in the midline. The effect in this fusion gives rise to gaps on the midline. From a posterior view, you can see as ligament flavon fills the entire interlamina foramen and extend to the articular face. A paramedial approach will always cross the ligamentum flavon. We can check the variation of the ligament flavon thickness in sagittal cross section. Both portion of the ligament are at 45 degrees. In a paramedial approach, the path traveled by the needle tips is lesser compared to a median approach. A slight toward cranial inclination will increase the thickness travel, increasing the sensitivity perceived when ligament is crossed. The thickness is not uniform. Commonly, they are asymmetric between left and right ligament portion. Just uh, to uh, one to two uh, millimeter offset from the midline help to cross a thicker ligament flavon during epidural techniques, offering a safer technique. We can see the gaps between the uh, left and right ligament flavon portion. Above and below ligament flavon, we observe the vertebral lamina. The needle must always pass through the ligamentum flavon that fill the interlaminar windows. The pedral fat is the main component in the lumbar and sacral spinal region. This is the distribution of epidural fat at lumbar region. It is important to highlight that the posterior uh, epidural fat at lumbar region, but uh, uh, the posterior epidural fat is found at the same uh, level than the uh, ligamentum flavum. As you can see, the thickness is greater in the midline and there is not fat ahead the vertebral lamina. We can check from anterior view of dural sac. 
the fat is located on the lateral places. The friction of the dural sac on the posterior longitudinal ligament during flexor extension movement of spine decreases its growth and make the passage of epidroscope through the midline more difficult. What is the easiest way for a solution injected into the epidural space to extend cranially, caudally, and circumferentially? This uh, will be the pathway that offer the least resistance. The pathway will be epidural fat. The injected liquid will go through pad that's open between the adipocytes that will be separated by the force of the injected volume. The higher injected volume and injection speed will reach a greater solution spreading. Different factors will affect the cranial sacral or circumferential spreading, such as the greater or lesser amount of fat, the negative thoracic pressure, the diameter of the uh, intervertebral canals. Uh, here we see several, several pathways open within the fat toward the intervertebral foramen. During an epidural injection, part of the injected volume is spread outside the spine uh, through path that's open through the thickness of fat between the muscles. This spreading of solution can also occur in reverse direction, entering toward epidural space after injecting large volume between muscle close to spine in certain peripheral anesthetic block. Now the intraspinal ligament inside dural sac. This is the dorsal arachnoid septum or ligament posticum. These ligaments are inside the dural sac within the subsarachnoid space, justify unexpected result and insufficient spinal block due to inadequate circulation of cerebrospinal fluid. Here, the denticulate ligament is always present, and other intraspinal ligaments like this broad posterior lateral ligament extending from right to left with a rare bubble shape, occupying the posterior spinal subcharagnoid space. Here we can see the dorsal arachnoid ligament, ligament posticum, extending on the midline along the entire dural sac, dividing to liquid posterior compartment. A ligament like this one may alter the final outcome after perform an, an spinal anesthesia. Analyze the dural sac. This is the external surface of a spinal dura mater. The collagen fibers are at random direction, but not in longitudinal direction and parallel among them, as we read in some books. The elastic fibers are at random direction too. Here are the elastic uh, fibers. This is a sagittal cross-section of a spinal dura mater. Uh, this is the uh, dura mater, and this is the thickness of the arachnoid layer. The dura mater is formed by around 80 concentric dural laminas. Here, the epidural space, this is the acquired subdural space, and here, the subcharagnoid space. Each dural lamina is formed by interlaced fiber at random direction. 
This is a strong membrane, but permeably membrane. It is not actually a pharmacologic barrier. Here we can observe the arachnoid layer, the dura mater, and at quite a subdural space. This is epidural space, cerebrospinal fluid, and caudequina nerve roots. Arachnoid layer is the true pharmacologic barrier of dural sac. This one is the dura mater, and that one is the arachnoid layers. This is the ultrastructure of arachnoid layer formed by arachnoid cell that govern the passage of drug crossing dural sac in a transcellular passage. All molecules administrate into epidural space must cross the plasmatic membrane and cytoplasms of this cell to reach the subarachnoid space. The degree of the liposolubility of molecules is an important factor in this passage. Does the arachnoid trabeculae have any interest for you? Arachnoid trabeculates form sleeves. The arrows show arachnoid sleeves enclosing the caudequina nerve roots. Arachnoid sleeves in red limit a small compartment surrounding the nerve roots, uh, filled for cerebrospinal fluid too. Outer, the arachnoid sleeve is the main pool of cerebrospinal fluid. But if by accident the local anesthetic volume is partially injected inside an arachnoid sleeve, the injected concentration is not diluted as always it is done, and toxic effect over the nerve is achieved. Here, Nerve root, the arachnoid leaf, local anesthetic molecule within the arachnoid leaf and within the main pool of cerebrospinal fluid. Clinical doses of local anesthetic will be a toxic doses when it was injected inside the arachnoid leaf. Here we check in our lab if this event may be possible. Arachnoid sleeve is translucent and allow us to see the needle orifice inside the sleeve. This event is possible and it could justify some neurological complication as cauda equina syndrome and radicular transient irritation syndrome have performed a normal and clear spinal anesthesia technique. Here, the full axial cross section of dural sac, including all caudequina nerve roots. Here, motor and sensorial nerve roots, sacral nerve roots. Sacral nerve roots can be reached during a lumbar puncture when we perform a middle approach. The paresthesia is a probably event when we perform a lumbar puncture. If the medullary cone in orange is rich and intraneural injection were performed, surely the patient will develop major neurologic complication as a permanent paraplegia. There have been reports of a permanent paraplegia after punctures between second third lumbar vertebra level approach as a result of anatomic variation at the side of the end spinal cord. Here the tile of the axons within caudequina nerve roots. Myelinated axon within caudequina nerve root at more magnification. Here we can observe the axon 
the myelin and the endoneurium. But what happens when our patient feel a paresthesia? This one may occur using our spinal needles in our patients. This lesion may occur during a paresthesia after perform a spinal anesthesia. But this patient in general does not suffer a clinical evidence of this injury because nerve function is ensured by sosan of axon. This nerve root of caudequina seen in the pictures uh, could have at least 80,000 millinated axon and only around 500 axon could be affected. Now you can see what happened in an unintentional subdural block. This is a typical spreading of contrast solution in an unintentional subdural block under X-ray. Symptoms are atypical and different in each patient because for some reason and now until now, the spreading was asymmetrical. In this event, the spreading may be in A, the sub, uh, within the subdural space in blue, or in B, within subdural in blue, and epidural space in red. Curiously, it does not produce a circumferential spreading throughout the entire dural sac as would be expected, but it will be necessary to know more about the subdural space to better understand this complication. But what is the subdural space mentioned so many times? The subdural space actual does not exist anatomically. Between the innermost dural lamina and the arachnoid layer, there is not a space, but this space is occupied by a tissue formed by neurotelial cells. Our star cell types that are very fragile and when they break, they form a bubble, a bubble that's enlarged, making a new space acquired at that time of very variable extension. Injection of a solution within the thickness of the dural sac can give rise to this acquired space. The strength of this space will depend on the injected volume. Please check this image. This is the entire thickness of the human dural sac. You can see there are, is not any space uh, between dura mater and arachnoid layer. Anatomically, subdural space does not exist. This is an acquired space. Above, there is not any space between dura mater and arachnoid layer. But below in this uh, sample, there is a space between dura mater and arachnoid layer. This space is an acquired space. This space is not circumferential. This space is limited at only appear where neurotelial cells has been broken. This justify why the clinical symptoms of this patient are so different because the local anesthetic may have a different spreading and of course, asymmetrical spreading. These are the star cells responsible of the origin of acquired subdural space when they are broken. This is a three-dimensional image of these cells. There are few specialized champions among them. The broken occur always in the neurotelial cells and never in neighbor tissue as dural lamina or arachnoid cells. 
the subdural compartment is a low resistant place. Analyze the complication. The dura matter is more rigid and the arachnoid layer is more elastic. After a large ten effect, a piercing of dura matter occurs. The needle push and detach the arachnoid layer, creating an acquired subdural space. A catheter could also be introduced, but we consider will be necessary to check this possible event. After checking this possible event in our lab, effectively this complication is possible, and we confirm that despite its size, an epidural catheter could, uh, could enter inside subdural space. This uh, opened a window to the knowledge of this complication and to be able to understand different clinical symptoms that occur in our operating rooms. Now we uh, will talk about the lumbar puncture and dural lesion that justify the origin of postdural uh, puncture headache, PDPH. These are spinal needles, Beverly Quinque and uh, pencil point spinal needles. These are the tips of these needles. Traditional hypothesis so far read in many anesthesiology textbooks. Currently, we know that the diagram is not right. The dura mater is formed by fiber at random direction, as we saw in previous slide. And most important, there are two uh, in superimposed lesion, one in dura mater and another in arachnoid layer formed by cells. And last one is the most important. Here, this lesion produced by 22 gauge quinque needle in first attempt aligning the bevel parallel and perpendicular to the axis. The lesion areas after 20 minutes to withdraw the needle were same. The shapes of the lesion produced by a bevel needle and another by pencil point type are different, but the open area of the lesion is similar. After using a bevel needle, the edges of the lesion are cleaner and more continuous. Again, after using a pencil point needle, the edges of the lesion are more torn, more irregular, more broken. In this old lesion, after a lumbar puncture, dura mater lesion closed first and later close the opening of a rational layer lesion. We can see uh, the event uh, partially open orifice in a rational layer already uh, occupied by dural laminas of dura mater. The rational layer is more important than dura mater in the mechanism of the closure of this orifice. The arachnoid layer closed later and is the one who controls the leakage of cerebrospinal fluid. As we have seen before, the arachnoid layer is formed by cells. It is not for, uh, formed by fibers. The cell uh, do not have any kin of a ligament. The ligament of the bevel needle has no foundation. This old recommendation currently has no value. And you can observe altogether different lesions produced by different needle capture at same magnification. Compare yourself the hole and the needle used to better understand why headache occur. We recently published in Rational Anesthesia Pain Medicine the evolution of the closure of the dural sac lesion in a ship model 
and we show it. Uh, does the natural healing process of the dura arachnoid lesion produced by a tree needle is not linear, but logarithmic with only 65% closure of the puncture hole at seven days. Probably around 30, 35% of the lesion is even open in our patient when disappear the symptoms. Why do uh, we have a fever headache after to use the pencil point needle? Traditional hypothesis related to uh, separating the fiber and avoiding their breakage or falls. After two, three collision against the bone, an unpredictable new design will be produced after to use a bevel uh, needle time. And the needle will lead to more large injury. But this event does not occur after to use pencil point needle because its, its tip does not deform after hitting the bone even several times. Well, well, and now uh, only to say thank you, uh, you all send Professor Karmakar, and this is uh, our email if you uh, contact with us. Thank you for all.